All right, hello everybody. So if you're wondering how to get Wish Ender and Witch Queen, I'm going to be going over that in this video. Now this is going to be a longer style of guides because a lot of people do find a longer style helpful, but I will also have a right to the point guide if you are experienced with the Shadow Throne, you don't need the longer style guide. I'll link that in the description below. But getting right into it, what you did, uh, what you do need to do is you need the Forsaken DLC, and what you're going to do is go to the Exotic Archive in the Tower. Uh, not the exotic archive, the quest archive, and you want to go over exotics and legacy. And you will see the wish ender quest here will say present talisman to a welcome warrior. So what you need to do for this first step is we're going to go into the Shadow Throne dungeon. And what we need to do is we need to do basically all the way up until you get to the statue where you present it. And I'm going to be showing you how you can do that, obviously, in this video. I'm going to explain basically how the whole dungeon works as we go, kind of... That way, that when you're doing it, you could just follow along. Also, if the mic sounds shitty, it is because it's a headset mic. I don't have my actual mic with me. It's, like, dying on me for some reason. So I might have to get a new one, or I'll just have to find a way to fix it. But until then, I am going to be using this headset mic. So I'm sorry in advance if it sounds like crap. But we're going to get right into the dungeon here. Now, how this first encounter works is it does take a little bit. Um, it's probably the longest part. Because we're really just getting to the statue for this first part. But it, it shouldn't be too bad. The little I'm going to be using is going to be Void. As well as the Heritage Shotgun. The Funnel Web SMG. And Galahorn. You can use whatever you want honestly. Like Sleeper. Um, blinding Grenades help. But just know that this dungeon can be a little bit of a pain to solo. So if you do need help with a Wish Hunter quest. I do help basically daily on my twitch streams so the link for that will be in the description below if you need help uh, i usually get the wish under checkpoint like to present the talisman and then i help with the three tokens after so if you are stuck on that just come by the stream i will gladly help you out it will take about like 30 minutes of even that to get the whole bow because i'll just carry you through the whole thing so basically when you get into this dungeon you're just gonna run up to this door now you do have to have all your teammates if you're doing it with people at this door if Someone's all the way in the spawn. This door will not open. And you do need to remember these mechanics that I'm going to be going over. Because you do need to do this basically twice, essentially. Except the second time you come in, you're going to have tokens that you have to charge. Which, once again, I'll explain in the video. So starting off, just keep running down here. We're going to have to kill a couple enemies at this beginning area. And if you're doing this, a lot of people are like, is Westender worth the hassle and honestly it's really not that good uh, if you want my honest opinion on it but i can help you get through it and make the grind for it a lot easier but yeah basically we're gonna start here just killing these enemies and then after we kill all the enemies here a symbol is gonna pop up so this is for every encounter you gotta kill the labyrinth so we have to go to the 6-9 fish symbol, which I'm going to show you. I'm also going to put a map on the screen. That way you can see where all the symbols are um, on the map. Because they're all throughout here. And it does get a little confusing. Uh, just your first time doing it. After, your, after that you get the hang of it. But here is the 6-9 fish symbol. As we almost get rolled here. <laughs> Gotta watch out for those phalanxes because they will launch you off the map. Alright, so that labyrinth is pretty much dead. So after we kill that one, the next symbol pops up. That is going to be the U Snake symbol. Or what I call it, the Kevin Durant symbol. If you know basketball, you might understand that joke. Here is the U symbol right here. I'll shoot Gallahorn real quick, make it easier. But yeah, you can tell what symbol you're going to because of that right there. So that would be the U snake. So now we need the infinite snake symbol. Which is simply just going to be right over here once again. You can tell by right there. All 
All right, there's that. So the next symbol is going to be the dragon symbol. Which is simply just going to be right over here. So once again, kill all the enemies. Now just take your time, like take advantage. Like if I'm one one shot, I'm gonna go over here. That way I don't die. You don't gotta get super super aggressive. You can get pretty passive because the take and do hit different. You will just get one shot out of nowhere by the most random things. All right, the next symbol is gonna be the bird symbol. Which is just going to be all the way up there. Also beware of the hobgoblins that have aimbot up top. I don't really worry about them too much. But sometimes they can be a pain. Yeah, here we are. It's just a bird. I don't know if that was a heavy drop. No. Shoot that labyrinth like Alahorn. Shoot it again, because why not? And there's that one, and then we have to go to the fish symbol, which is conveniently right down there. Now, the order will be different every time you do this, so don't expect your symbols to be in the same order as mine. But just know that you do need to go to each labyrinth one time to kill them, so you will go to every symbol. No matter what the order is. I just want this Lamarin dead. There we are. So now we go to the final symbol, which is back at the spawn. Which is basically where we started off. So this time, it's going to be a little bit further, closer to the end. This labyrinth right here. So there it is. We also got a waking visual. Will it be my opening shot range finder? I guess I won't find out. At least not yet. I kind of want to check that. All right, so we're gonna jump down here. Then I'm gonna show you a little trick to kinda skip this part, but you don't have to do this. I'll show you the other way. So what you wanna do is you could jump over to this little ledge right here, and then you can jump over here. Cause you see, you don't gotta worry about those enemies down there. You can kinda just run past them. And then you can kinda just go up here to make it to the top that way or I'll do it for the sake of the video you can go this way which is like the normal route we just climb up the stairs but just know the enemies can be a pain throughout this whole dungeon I'm not gonna lie as you can see I'm about to die you see how quick like you get one shot it's the take and hit different they really do so you kill that little uh, architect guy and that opens up that door now if you've ever taken a walk of shame be prepared to take another one this hallway basically you need to make it to the end here without dying what you could do is put on like Xenophage or a Sniper and shoot those enemies individually. However, we can't be weenies here, so what we do is we just kind of run it down the middle area here. And you basically just pray that you don't die, if you want my honest answer. That's kind of just how it goes. Just going to use Invis there. It's basically what you do. If you sit there shooting all the enemies, it's going to take way too long. So we kind of just skip those enemies. But you don't have to. You can not take your time and kill them. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead. 
All right, and now we gotta make it through the ogre room right here. Which when you go in to the dungeon, you kind of just take this path that I'm taking. Or once again, you could take your time and kill all the ogres. That way, if you're struggling, like falling off the map, that's totally fine too. But once again, for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna run past them all. Not really gonna. I've done this so many times, I don't really worry about shooting them anymore. But don't do that. I'm telling you. <laughs> When I first started doing this, the amount of times I fell off the map there because of those ogres was too high. So for this part, this is just the thrall part. I'm going to show you where the hidden chest is really quickly as well. Might as well grab the loot while you're doing it. So if you need to stock up on ammo, good place to do that. Alright, so you just jump down here. And then loot this chest, and then you get loot, obviously, go back up to the portal, and just keep running through this little thrall area. Now, the only thing that sucks about this is you can't really get your health back, and you can't, like, use your abilities, you can't double jump. You can dodge and stuff like that. Like, I can dodge to go invis, but that's about it. Can't double jump. You can use your super. So I guess you can use most abilities, you just can't, you know, double jump or triple jump or whatever. Now remember these areas because, like I said, we gotta come back in here and we gotta do those three tokens. Now I don't have the quest myself because I've done it, but what I'm doing is I'm taking someone that um, is on the quest, read right over there and getting the quest done so you won't see me get the three tokens after we present the talisman but just know that after we present it you will get the three tokens you used to have to do the question mark mission on the tangle shore but that is just not the case anymore this is actually my first time doing this quest in witch queen so i'm not even 100 percent sure if you get the tokens right away after you present it we're gonna see what they've changed I'm actually kind of interested. Alright, so, once you get to here, I'm going to quickly explain kind of how this encounter works for this part. So there's going to be a big ogre in the middle that will be immune. What you need to do is you're going to kill one wizard here, one to the left, one up in the middle, and one to the right. And what that does is it drops a charge. You have like 30 or 40 seconds to kill the next wizard after you pick the charge up, and if you don't, you unfortunately you die and you have to start over unless you have teammates but you do have to kill each wizard and pick the charges up and after you charge them you're gonna dunk in one of these four dishes that are around there. there's one there one there one across I'll, sh I'll show you it's just kind of yeah, obviously I'm getting shot at but I'll show you how it works to make it a lot simpler so one wizard spawns in you kill it it drops that little circle petitioner's mark you pick it up and then we have 45 seconds in between to kill the next one and pick up the next mark so simply just go over here, the next wizard, drops the next charge, you just run into it, pick it up, and then you have another 45 seconds. So there it is, you get the third one, and then they killed the fourth one, so we picked the final one up. We're going to dunk in a dish. Doesn't matter which one, it can be any of the four. And then simply for this part, you just need to kill the ogre. And then there it is for the present the talisman portion of the quest. It's as simple as that. After you kill the ogres, after you kill the ogre, just run up to this statue present your talisman and then you'll be awarded with the next step let me know the three tokens. so he's gonna present it 
And that is how you get the three tokens. There it is. So once you present your talisman, you will get the three tokens. And what we need to do now is charge those three tokens, which we got to basically just load back in to the Shadow Throne. We're going to reset our checkpoint. And then I'm go not going to show you the whole run. I'm just going to show you how you can charge all three of your tokens. Uh, just because you just saw the whole dungeon run. You don't really need uh, further explanation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the token charging process. And then that's the final part of the bow. Now this is probably the hardest part. So if you are confused, like I said, or stuck on it, just come by the stream. Twitch.tv slash frigs. The link will be in the description below. I'll just help you out. It's so much easier. So, but yeah, I'm going to show you the first token right here. It's basically on the first encounter anyway. It's really easy. Alright, so after killing the first labyrinth at the opening encounter, this is when you're going to do the first token. Now, do this instantly. Don't wait, because if you do kill all the labyrinths before you do the token, unfortunately, the token will disappear. Meaning, you got to do the whole first encounter over again, which you don't want to do. So, you just want to jump up here on top of this statue. Then, jump across. Pick the relic up. And then you just want to follow the path that I take. So we're going to jump from here back to the top of that statue. And then we're just going to jump across over here to this little building. And then what you want to do is walk up to the relic that doesn't have an orb in their hand. Deposit the orb. And then two enemies are going to spawn in here. You just want to kill them. So there's the first one. And then there's the second one. And then there it is. That is the first token. You see how it says you are worthier. It will also cleanse it on your screen. So that is going to be the first token. Now just do the normal first encounter like you normally would. And then the second orb is going to take place after the walk of shame. Where you have to run in that little ogre room. So I'm going to do the opening encounter and do all that. And the next time I see you will be at the second token. Okay so after the walk of shame encounter. This is where you're going to do the second token right here there's basically a couple steps to this one this is going to be the first one so this is when you'd actually want to kill all the ogres because while you're running this relic they are like i said going to shoot you off the map essentially and you don't want that so we're going to kill most of the ogres here kill those ones and then we're going to pick the relic up and we need to deposit it in the next statue so we're going to jump over here. Just jump up here. Or you could go the long way, but this way is just always the safest and easiest for me. Going to jump up onto here. Jump up there. And then this is where you just deposit the second one. As easy as that. And then all you need to do is make it to the throne room where there is going to be another token that you have to deposit. gonna keep running this way be careful if you do leave some of these ogres alive like there's one over there they will catch you off guard and shoot you off the knife around like warlock or something once you do get kind of booped off there's not much you could do because you kind of like sink to the floor on warlock sometimes so that's always scary so here we are at the thrall room and once you get in here we're going to go over to the right. Pick up the relic here. And you can drop the relic and shoot the enemies if they're all over you. But for the most part, you should be alright running by them. But you never know. There are those times where they come out of nowhere and surround you and you can't move and then you die. It has happened to me a couple times where I've died to these fools. There's nothing more embarrassing than dying to Thrall. Especially when you're streaming. Honestly. We're just going to run by them. Now if you do die after depositing this orb, you do need to basically not do the whole dungeon over. You can kind of cheese it, but if you die right here um, with the relic in the next room, what you could do, I'm going to show you really quickly just in case it happens to you, because sometimes it does. So you want to jump up here. You want to have stasis or like... Uh, um, salvager, well not salvagers, the, uh, whatever the stasis 
grenade launcher is or whatever. You want to like throw your stasis nade right up there, jump on it, and then jump back up. And then you can do the relics over again if you do die. Um, but you do need to go to orbit and load back in for the relics to kind of reset. Yeah, basically if you die in this room, you got to do oh, those past two relics over again. Not the first one, though, because that, like, at the very, very beginning, the opening encounter, because that one's already done and good. Uh, killing the enemies in here is basically the final step for the second token. Which is what I'm going to show you. But, yeah, sometimes you die in this room. It's happened to me a couple times, too. So, if you do die here, just go to orbit, load back in, do the little stasis glitch back up. And go back to the little ogre room, do that relic, and then do the thrall room relic. And that will work. Yeah, you see how quick these scions laser you, which is why I'm saying sometimes it just happens. They multiply. Look at that. They do get brutal. But, like, Trinity Ghoul takes care of them pretty easily. Wrist Runner, I use sometimes. Then we're gonna have to kill this little boss right there. And that is the second token complete. So if you die after that, you're good. You don't have to do the other relics because that was the final step. And now we proceed on into the final relic, which is the ogre room. So remember how we did the ogre where we went around, killed the wizards, and then deposited in one of those four dishes that were on the room? This time it's going to be a little different. So we're going to do the same thing, picking up all four of the uh, the things that the wizards drop. I think it's what, Petitioner's Mark or something like that is what it's called. However, after you deposit the dish, you're going to kill a Minotaur, which will spawn the final relic in. I'm going to basically show you it, but you, basically for this, you're spawning in a mini ogre before you kill the final boss. And I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to wait. For the encounter so if you jump down right now it sometimes bugs out so you wait where it has that little respawn restricted and then that's when you can jump down so basically same thing except we're not killing the big ogre right away we got to spawn in a mini ogre the same thing with the four wizards around the map So there's the first one. If you have blinding grenades too, that could help. Sometimes I'll use that. Like I said, this room isn't easy either. It can be a pain. There's the second one. Kill these ads here. Try to get some more ammo. Alright, there's the third mark. Then we will kill the final wizard right here. So after we pick the final one up, we are going to deposit any of this, it doesn't matter. And then we gotta spawn in the mini ogre right over here. Kill that minotaur. And then that's when the relic will spawn in. You gotta watch out for these little orbs that he shoots at you because these will kill you if you don't shoot them. So make sure you do. As you can see, that's how Raindrop died right there. So there it is, you deposit that dish, and now for it to count, you do have to kill this final ogre. If you don't kill that ogre, the relic will not count, so just make sure you kill him. As you see, the goblins are the most annoying part of this. So yeah, we kill that final ogre, and that is the final relic. So now what you need now is basically, if you die, Right here, that's fine. The final relic is done. All you gotta do is kill that big ogre now. So if you wipe a couple times, that's totally okay. 
Basically, the quest is complete. All you need to do is go up to that statue again and interact with it and wish it will drop. Which I'm gonna I'll show you that again after this. I'm not gonna show you me killing the ogre boss again because we've already done it. The next time you see it, we'll be at the. All right, so there it is. So you kill the final ogre, and then what you're gonna do is basically just go up to that statue again, where you presented your talisman. Obviously, I don't have the quest because I've done it. Um, I just able to do the steps over again. But yeah, you walk up to this statue, get nice and close, interact with it, and wish ender will be yours. That's going to be it for this video. If it did help, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one, alright? Peace.